But um, I got an interesting one for you today, so oh just brace yourself. I'm so ready. My backpack is just full of documents right now. Full of Goblin Hour scripts like it's all and such. Like yeah, not really scripts, it's just like files upon files of scary <laughs> creatures. Research. All right, let's get into this damn thing. The world. What a terrifying place. Seek horrors, and you will find they exist behind every corner. If endless fears of evil beasts and the wickedness of reality torments your restless spirit, confront it. Take a seat and settle in. You've made it just in time. For the Goblin Hour. Hello, audience, and welcome to Goblin Hour. It's me, Goblin Hour Ben. Today, joined with my special guest, Lane. Hello, hello. It's me, Lane. Thank you, thank you. And he is sick today, so his voice is a little sick sounding. I am a little sick. Yeah, yes. but he's he's doing he's doing well. He's on the mend. He's taking his vitamins. Doing good. He got some medications. So We're doing good. That's good. But Lane, welcome to Goblin Hour. How do you feel to be here? I'm so excited, man. I've always wanted to be on the Goblin Hour. I'm a long a long time listener, uh, first time guest. So um, yeah, we met at work. Then we uh, were playing at work. What kind of do experience do you have in any sort of? spiritual supernatural scary creatures if any well, not a lot you know to be honest i've had uh i've had maybe one or two kind of kind of scary supernatural uh occurrences oh tell me about my life them. yeah so there's this one time when i was little i was staying in my grandparents house you know mm-hmm. as one does yes when they're a little kid mm-hmm. um you're with grandma and grandpa you feel safe grandma and grandpa i'm with my brother also he's in the bed next to me okay uh, uh, i should say we're in the same bed raises eyebrows bed no, it's not weird. I swear, he's my he's my brother. Wait, say that again. Say he's in the bed next to me, or he's in bed with me, or he's, something. He's in bed. He's in the same bed next to me. In the same bed. Pause. <laughs> Cut the chatter. All right, <laughs> come on now. It's not weird. Tell me your good story. Um. Yeah. So anyway, we just we were just tucked in by grandma and grandpa. You know. You're and snug. Yeah, we're snug as a little bug in our <laughs> in a bed. In our bed. Yeah. <laughs> and uh. She didn't close the door. My grandma, I should say. She didn't close the door on her way out. So the door is no. wide open. Anything could come in. So, yeah, we're about to fall asleep. We're, we're settling down, you know. And all of a sudden, there's no one by the door, all right? No, the don't door say just it. slammed <gasps> shut. Just, like, r- really it's hard. so scary. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, oh my God. What was that? And I, and I covered my head up with the sheets. <laughs> He's miming hiding under the sheets for the audience. It was so scary. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. Do you have another one? You said you had a couple. Or is that the main one? That might just be it. Okay. I might have been lying. Good story. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, man. It was really oh, scary. Whoops, stop. What the fuck? Whoa. Turn off. All right. Um, All right audience. Yeah, that is great. Do you believe in supernatural stuff generally? Oh. Um, or are you a skeptic? I would say, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a skeptic. But I don't really have much, um, you know, I don't really have a big reason to believe in it, apart from that one story, I guess. I've never really had any other big uh, occurrences, yeah. supernatural occurrences. Okay, that's so fair. I'm open to uh, believing more. You ready to hear about say. goblins during yeah. this hour? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want to guess what I have for you today? I know I texted you to ask. From our discussion, yeah. Would you prefer a man-like cryptid or more of a creature-like cryptid? I did say man-like. So do you know of any man-like cryptids? Oh, man. That you would... I can think of. There's the Moth Man. Ooh, that is one we've done it's before. Classic. Unfortunately, I'll let you know. Um, would you count, like, SCPs as cryptids? Uh, you can guess one, because it might be... I know this uh, thing I have was the inspiration for an SCP, apparently. Okay. There's, uh, there's one that I know of. It's the guy, if you look at him, he gets all mad. He, like, oh, you. okay. If you look him in yeah, the no. Eye. SCPs might be, become more of a thing later on in Goblin Hour. Mm. But as of right now, we've been sticking to ones that have cold, hard evidence like, gotcha. uh, of them. Right. The so, real ones. Yeah. Okay. I have. I don't think I can guess, no. I don't okay. Know. You may have heard of him if you know about... SCP stuff. I believe this character is inspired creepypastas films. It's a well-known character. This is the character known as 
Indrid Cold. Ooh, I've never heard of that. Indrid Cold? Yeah. Okay, okay. Also, normally the Wikipedia page is, like, pretty big. Like, it's got a lot. Oh, yeah. Check this out. This is the entire Wikipedia page on this character, Whoa. on this cryptid. It is less... We're not working with a lot. ...than maybe a third of a page that Wikipedia has on this demoness man. Wow. But, yeah. Not much is known about him. I'll tell you about it. I mean, this is a good way to get into it, I guess. Indrid Cold, also known as the Grinning Man, is a mysterious legendary being believed to be connected to the Mothman. <gasps> first encountered by Woodrow Derenberger as reported in the John Keel nonfiction book, The Mothman Prophecies. He is described as being a humanoid entity, allegedly extraterrestrial in origin, with an inhumanly large smile on his face. Indrid Cold appears as a character in The Mothman Prophecies, a film based on John Keel's book. He has also been depicted as a character in other works of fiction, such as the podcast, the video game, Fallout 76. No, fuck that. They are not a rival. <laughs> I'm censoring their name, too. <laughs> Cut out the competition. But they're also in the video game Fallout 76. I know that one. Woo! It's not very good. Audience. <laughs> Sorry, Fallout fans. And it's also in the trading card game MetaZoo. Injured Cold is. Whoa. But so what do you think of this guy so far? He sounds intriguing. Um, he sounds kind of familiar with the the big wide grin. Yeah, it's a pretty commonplace in a lot of... Yeah. Pretty, modern folklore and scariness. I would say so too, yeah. A, a grinning white man. Big, tall, scary, scary grinning white man. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's like, okay, all right. Slender, Slender Man doesn't have a face, right? No, but if he did, it, you guarantee he'd be grinning. Oh, yeah. He'd be happy. Happy as a motherfucker. Happy as an MF, rather. <laughs> right, right. Let's not say the F word on this fucking show, okay? You're right, dude. I'm sorry. It's okay. So, yeah, he, he's crazy. He's powerful. Um, I don't really have too much information on him because it was kind of hard to find, but I think I have enough here that we can definitely confirm if he's real or not real. Okay. Can you remind me of his name one more time? Indrid Cold. But Indrid if you want to refer to Cold. him as the Grinning Man, I'd be okay, okay with that. I'll do, I'll do that. That's okay. kind of a weird name. Hard to remember. This next one, uh, this next article I have here, comes from The Daily Yonder. The article is titled, Local Lore. Woodrow Derenberger in The Legend of Injured Cold, an unsettling encounter on a road in rural West Virginia, was the beginning of a rural legend and a personal tragedy for the man involved. West Virginia. That's where this that's where this man hangs out. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's a, he's okay. a Virginian. All sorts of characters down there. Yeah. You got to be on the lookout. You got Mothman. You got this character. Is he in Virginia too? Yeah. He's from uh, Point Pleasant, oh, West Virginia. that's right. That's right. Wow. At his museum and I everything. I got all sorts of shit and going somehow on Mothman's there. connected to this guy, which I didn't know about. And I'm excited to see more about that. They're homies. So. They hang out. Well, I'm willing to bet. That's a good bet. <laughs> Audience. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. They agree that your instincts are dead thank on. Thank you. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Things always seem chilly. No, what the fuck? I fucked up. That was chilly. I'm one sentence. Chilly. We chilly. Talk- Put on uh, Bluey. I barely know her. <laughs> All right. Uh, things always seem mysterious on chilly fall nights in the country. Can't argue with that. Uh, for Ridrow Derenberger, his mysterious encounter with an almost with an almost human grinning man. Can I just say, sorry to interrupt you. In the back roads of West Virginia, yeah. Woodrow Derenberger. Mm-hmm. What a name. I know, that is crazy. <laughs> First name Woodrow, last name Derenberger. Derenberger. Be a normal name, dude. Yeah, come on, Call man. yourself like, like Tom a... Smith. <laughs> Please, come on. No, this is Woodrow All these Derenberger. these weird-ass names. Woodrow Derenberger, Indigo. Ind- Indrid Cold. Ind- Indrid Cold. <laughs> yeah, this is, come on now. This is a little bit some bullshit. West Virginia, get your shit together. Name your guys normally. Please. But, uh... One November night would affect him and his family for almost a quarter of a century. Whoa. In 1966, Whoa. Woodrow Derenberger was a sewing machine salesman living in <laughs> Mineral Wells, West Virginia. One November night that year, Derenberger said he was returning from a business trip to Marietta, Ohio, when he had to stop Damn. to adjust a sewing machine in the back of his truck. Okay. <laughs> I'm really he, getting into it. Once he got back I'm Putting on the myself road. in Mr. Woodrow's shoes right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're on the dark road. It's chilly. Your sewing machine it's fucks cold up. Out. Like, it's right, November. I got my sewing business. machine in the back. And then uh, you get out of the back. You notice the lights ahead of you. 
Thinking the lights were police officers, he stopped only to discover that the lights didn't belong to a car, but to what he said was an aircraft that looked like a kerosene lamp chimney. Darren Burgess said a man stepped out and approached his truck. Hey, who are you? This this next is a quote from... uh, I'm acting out uh, what what Mr. Darren Burgess would say in this this situation. He looked perfectly natural and normal as any human being. Darren Berger told Ronald Maines during an interview on WTAP-TV in Parkinsburg, West Virginia, the day after the encounter. His face looked like he had a good tan, a deep suntan. He was not too dark, but it was just like he had been out in the sun a lot and had a good tan. His hair was combed straight back, and it was dark brown. He seemed to have a good thick head of hair. His eyebrows, his face, features were very normal. I don't believe that he looked like any different from any other man that you meet on the street. West Virginian first encounter with a Californian. <laughs> his car was crazy. <laughs> But he wasn't normal, Darren Berger said. <gasps> he had a large grin and kept his arms folded, with his hands up under his armpits. And though we spoke to Darren Berger, his well, smile cold outside. never moved. That's a good point. He spoke, Darren Berger said. I would Berger say he's, he's pretty... Sounds pretty normal, apart from the big old grin. Are you ready to eat words? He spoke, Darren Berger said, telepathically. <laughs> okay. Alright, I'll shut up. I don't <laughs> know what I'm talking about. Ooh, <laughs> Whoa. Oh, Okay. Okay. He asked me to roll down the window on my right-hand side of, the, of my truck, and I'd done what he asked, Darren Berger said during the interview. And this man stood there, and he first asked me what I was called, and I know he meant my name, and I told him my name, and he said, he asked me, he said, why are you frightened? No, he said, why are you frightened? Why are you frightened? He said, don't be frightened. We wish you no harm. He we said, wish you no harm. We mean you no harm. We wish only you happiness. <laughs> And I told him my name, and when That's I told him my name, hell. he said he was called Cold. It was I Darren Berger. I'm the grinning man. <laughs> I'm the <laughs> grinning man. <laughs> <laughs> it was Darren Berger's and the world's introduction to the entity known as Indrid Cold. Whoa. Wow. What a start. He wasn't actually telling him his name uh, when he was like, what, what do I call you? He said... I'm cold. And it's because it was a cold, chilly winter night. Yeah. <laughs> good one. Thank you, dude. That's good. I'll be right back. I'm going to do my victory lap. Okay. Yeah, no, please. Go ahead. Thank you, guys. Hey, high, high five. High five on the way around. Nice. All right, I'm sitting back down. I'm here, guys. Right, audience, chill, please. All right. Um. Yeah, we got all that shit. Wow. Naturally, Darren Berger reported his encounter to the Parkersburg police, but the next day, the media frenzy surrounding the story took off. Darren Berger agreed to be interviewed on live television on WTAP. So, Taking part in the interview were members of the state police, representatives of the county airport, the Parkersburg, fucking a million people wanted in on this, I guess. So basically, what I'm hearing is this, albeit somewhat strange-looking fellow, mm-hmm. comes up to Mr. Uh, Woodrow... Darren Burger, mm-hmm. whatever the hell. Yeah, something like that. And this this guy, he's just like, he's just kind of kind of speaking weird, and he's acting a little cold, but he communicates no, no, no. telepathically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the weird. part. He professor X's into his brain. That's pretty cool. But I mean, apart from that, he didn't harm him in any way. He didn't, he didn't but he was f- quite frightening. But that's all we know so far. Okay. okay. Now, he's probably gonna be. Like, I am he jumping came to, to conclusions and, like, a little bit. I've only heard something. That's true. I've only heard a little bit of the story. I might be drawing some hasty conclusions. I'll I'll act the part of a skeptic for th- for this. Okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, a lot of the time on Goblin Hour, I work hard to convince the guests that we are living in a scary world, and they would like to believe otherwise you because know what, it's dude, I don't believe you. I think this world is amazing and beautiful and great. I don't think it's scary at all. Well, let's keep reading, and let's say when I fin- when I continue reading, you might not want to have that water in your mouth because you're going to be spitting it all over. Yeah, my it's going to be everywhere. All right, this next part. Is continuing the thing we read a second ago. Alright. After the interview aired, however, others came forward with claims that they had also seen a figure matching Darren Berger's description of cold. Oh, fuck. Sorry, I burped. That was awesome. <laughs> One man reported that a man matching injured cold's description tried to flag him down, but he was too afraid to stop. <laughs> Whoa! What an asshole. <laughs> Help me! It's I'm cold, so scared. It's cold outside. But to be fair, he's smiling at him with a big evil and human grin. Is it evil, though, or is it just a it's big... It's a human. Big, okay, that would be kind of scary. It's a big grin. Still, though, he might be in trouble. You never know. He's just, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, please. 
Just, oh, oh, I can't. I'm too scared. <laughs> Fuck. He's good, smiling. God. Yeah, no. I'm terrified. <laughs> yeah, no. That's. I don't know. Maybe that's why he's still alive. West Virginians, man. They do not give a fuck about injured. <laughs> this is what turned him evil. Uh, other people claimed to see lights and fluttering vehicles on the road Derenberger said he talked to Cold on. Several witnesses reported they had been they had seen Derenberger stop on the road, talking to a man on the same. What the? F- hold Wait, on, let me read this. There were witnesses. I guess. Uh, and several witnesses reported they had seen Derenberger stopped on the road, talking to a man on the same road. Yeah, I guess Wait, some people so there were him. other people around when that first exchange happened? Yeah, I guess so. It does corroborate <laughs> they're just, they're, it. They're just looking off from the I side of the I think the idea is he's stopped. Vroom, other cars go by. Is that, are those two people fucking talking? Why are they just sitting there? Why Dude, are they ha- on the side of the road? Those Dude, that guy's sh- fucking car weirdos. looks like a, a chimney stack. <laughs> that is That's weird. crazy. I forgot about that little that little tidbit. Yeah, he had a crazy vehicle with him. <laughs> so he has a cool vehicle. <laughs> He's a somewhat chill guy. He can communicate ta- telepathically. He said, I only want you to be happy. He sounds pretty cool to me, honestly. Okay, we'll see what happens. We'll see, we'll see. Um, for the next three weeks, newspapers ran stories. News coverage eventually of newspaper... News co- <laughs> News coverage eventually died down, but Cold's visitations continued. Derenberger reported he was visited often by the strange grinning man over the course of the next month. Eventually, Derenberger's family said they too had seen cold and other strange things. Naturally, the media attention given to the story brought locals to Derenberger's home, hoping to get a glimpse of cold. The attention, as well as the scorn and ridicule he was suffering from, led Derenberger... Sc- scorn and ridicule? People were like, you fucking You moron. idiot, why do you keep talking He's to him? He's not injured cold. He's, He's just not a guy. real. You're so stupid, <laughs> just like your father. Dumbass, if you hadn't stopped on the side of the road, this wouldn't have happened. Look at what you were wearing. Follow the West Virginia way. You deserve right? it. <laughs> yeah. You see someone on the side of the road, you drive past. <laughs> you drive past, honk, and go, <laughs> fuck you! Get out of the fucking way! <laughs> <laughs> West Virginians are so evil. <laughs> Naturally, the media attention, yeah, his scorn and ridicule, ridicule caused him to seek medical attention. His physician <laughs> gave him a clean bill of health. I'm so sad. No evidence of chemical imbalance or disorder. Disruption. Nice. Damn, so he got bullied so much he had to go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh my god, apparently wow. also, uh, the family received years of harassing phone <laughs> calls and blamed lost jobs and friends on Derenberger's tales of injured cold. Derenberger suffered from painful headaches and depression, and eventually his wife divorced him. <laughs> Derenberger moved away from the area to escape his notoriety. Oh my god. Holy shit. This guy ruined his life. He did, just because he... This is, why, this is why parents and grandparents in West Virginia will be like, and this is why you don't stop on the side of the road. Andrew Cold will come You don't help too. people. And you'll, you'll t- if you help someone, there's a good chance they'll turn out to be injured cold, and then you will likely end up having to have your tire rifle wound. You will get divorced. You will lose jobs. You will lose friendships. All your friends will bully you. It is not worth it. Just keep driving. <laughs> it's a classic West Virginia bedtime story Hi, Grandma. to naughty children. <laughs> if you stop now, when you start driving, road. you better not stop. Keep That's going. I'm tell- you better keep going. If you see anyone they're in the road you just run them over just floor that shit bro <laughs> just keep on going bro just smack that bitch smack him smack him re- smack him good his wife divorced him yeah that really does suck his life did impl- like the fact that his fucking wife divorced him too you need to stop talking this about injured cold <laughs> you're scaring the kids honey <laughs> but he was real <laughs> i swear he was there he shows so up in our crazy. home what else does it... Okay, um, move more about Derenberger. After years of living somewhere else, however, Derenberger moved back to the Mineral Wells area for his death in 1990 at the age of 74, 23 years after injured cold supposedly pulled him over on the highway. While he never recanted his statement, he never spoke of them again either. Which, to be fair, I can understand uh, why not. It yeah, legitimately not ruined his life. <laughs> Divorced his wife. Like, it's not even an exaggeration to say his life was ruined because oh, yeah, of this. yeah, it was. That's interesting. Man. So I wonder if this guy has some kind of, like, powers that, like, you know, like ruin okay. his life, or was it self-inflicted? He, he puts negative luck onto him? I don't think so. I think even mentioning was him... Was Derenberger so obsessive about this guy <laughs> that he's, I don't think so. he it's unintentionally so ruined his him. own life? Or was he just so, like, he was just so fucked up in the head about this guy telepathically communicating to him dude i don't think so i think he wasn't fucked up i think he just had a weird experience maybe he was wrong and the guy wasn't using telepathy 
but like his life was ruined and I don't think it was the fault of his own. He's just a normal guy. I think he reported it. People thought it was crazy. The news came over and people went, this guy's fucking lying. And then they were like, hey man. We should kick him out. Hello, Darren Berger. Hey man, just think you should kill yourself. Uh, that's <laughs> bullshit. You know it. All right. Hey, I don't fucking believe you. Why don't you leave? Hangs up. West Virginia. All right? You're not oh, welcome here. Phone's ringing again. Wonder if it's. Uh, I was expecting a call from my physician. Hey, man, it's me. Uh, kill yourself, by the way. I fucking hate you. Injured cold is not real. Hey, this is your uh, sewing machine uh, coworker. I think you should <laughs> quit. Quit work and leave. We quit all, working with we us. I hate you here. I'm gonna get the promotion, by the way. Also, your wife. She's with me now. Yeah. Also, I banged your wife last night because she, she complained to me a lot about how you're talking about this this weird guy. And I said, complain about this, and then I gave her a fat smooch. <laughs> oh, see you, loser. And then he went, all right, I'm phone. moving. Fuck this. Goes, <laughs> I fucking hate this world. I'm moving to somewhere else. Calif- <laughs> I'm going to California. All right, um, who knows what actually happened to Darren Berger on that strange night? His story did little for him. His obsession with it... Oh, I guess so. His obsession with it cost him his job and his wife. According to Keel, who visited him a year later, they found him hiding behind drawn curtains from what he believed were hundreds of UFO believers and skeptics, saying that injured cold and his friends frequently visited the farm, often arriving by automobile for long, friendly chats. He had almost certainly become delusional. Holy shit. Long, friendly chats. I guess so. Cold November nights on lonely rural roads will always be a good setting for mysterious encounters. It's it's pretty creepy. And then the last thing we got on this one, rural areas are always the best place for creepy tales, he said. It's dark. It's true. It's dark. There are trees and murky creeks, and you are far from the comforting protection of lights and people. Especially in West Virginia. (laughs) That's what you're going to find out there. That one's fucked up. That one's just sad. Yeah, it's Um, not really that scary. To be, to be perfectly honest. But this next piece it's I have. It's kind of sad. It's from literally the villain's wiki. Oh, shit. An Indrid Cold on here. There's a few aliases. He's described as Indrid Cold, as we know. Mm-hmm. Alias, the smiling man, the dancing man, or the oh, grinning man. The dancing man. And see, here's a good example. Origin is originally from American folklore, but he has since been heavily adapted into creepypasta. That's why he pulled over on the side of the road, you know. He saw him doing the gritty <laughs> side of the road. <laughs> Holy shit, that guy's fresh as hell. Oh, my God. Hey, bro, you're getting I gotta, it. Yo, I didn't know you were chill like that. I didn't know you were chill like that. <laughs> vroom, 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 vroom. Thank you. Vroom, 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 vroom. Thank you, mortal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, injured cold. He seems powerful. He seems scary. Wow. He's, he's got some hidden abilities. And he ruined Woodrow Darren Berger's life. Poor guy. Um, Injured Cold, also known as the Smiling Man, is a human-like cryptid which originates as a modern urban legend on the internet. Many have speculated that Injured Cold might be related to the infamous infamous Mothman. So, you know, where does that come from? I know, it didn't really mention that. Are there any similarities between the two? Apart from being vaguely humanoid? I don't think so. This Mothman, from my limited knowledge, he's got wings. He's got, like, big red eyes or something. Dude, I'm looking at some of this stuff here on this page. It's kind of interesting. It's saying some of his powers. It cuts off a bit, but it's saying stamina, stealth, time traveling, and disaster inducement. Oh, damn. Which, if disaster, disaster inducement, inducement, he induced a fucking life-ruining oh, multiple disasters okay. on him, bro. So maybe it was a little bit of a mixture between uh, Mr. Cold's powers. And his obsession. And Darren Berger's obsession. Maybe Darren was like already, uh, Darren Berger was already sort of predisposed to obsessive behavior. To be perfectly honest, he doesn't sound like he all he was all there in the first place. No, he was definitely delusional at the end of his life. Yeah. But um yeah, here's some so I said his powers, here's some of his hobbies apparently. Oh. Dancing, looking up at the sky, chasing others, <laughs> stalking, and communicating <laughs> with humans. <laughs> wow. Wow. What are some of your hobbies? <laughs> I like to chase people. I love dancing, chasing people. <laughs> Got Looking it. up at the sky <laughs> and communicating with humans. <laughs> yeah. Those are the good ones. All wow. Right. Um, here are some of his goals. Can we get the check, please? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, goals. Capture his victims and bring them to their untimely <laughs> doom. Communicate with Earth's inhabitants and warn others of disasters. See, it keeps saying Earth's inhabitants, communicating with humans. This is kind of getting to a bit of a an extraterrestrial level. I know. I, I think that's a lot of uh, the theory on this. Um, some of his crimes, though, include stalking and attempted kidnapping. Crimes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to try him. 
Um, and the type of villain he is is the enigmatic the grinning stalker. man versus the state of West Virginia. <laughs> he, he would show up to his court date. <laughs> All right, uh, this is more about his appearance. Injured Cold is believed to be a very tall man with an old suit. His eyes are very small and wide open with a cartoonishly wide and long, eerie smile on his face. Some suggest that the man is missing some face pieces such as ears and the nose, while oh. others have described him as almost looking completely normal physically. People That's what the first description suit to be either said. blue or green. What? What was that? Sorry, I was just saying. No, it's okay. That's what the the first little uh, story. I mean, from what I from what I remember, it's it like he was pretty normal. Oh. He had hair and like, yeah, no. The only thing weird about him was his big grin. Yeah, but there's a good sketch here that I'll show you at some point. Okay, let me sneeze. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Bless you, dude. <laughs> Thank you, man. That was intense. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Oh, my God. Holy shit. We got to cancel. We got to come back after a break. <laughs> I got another one coming. Oh. Oh. Here it comes. <laughs> oh. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was a big sneeze. That was crazy. Mm. He's here. Mr. Cold. He's, He's exhibiting his cold. dark influence on Ben. <laughs> <laughs> it's believed that injured cold is a stalker of people. That's pretty scary. He reminds me of, um, did you ever watch those those old YouTube videos of salad fingers? Oh, you know I've seen, I'm familiar with them, yes. Like the green guy, he's like... Yeah. He's scary, yeah. Yeah, he kind of reminds me of that guy. I can see that. You want to know more about his personality and origins? I do. The personality of... In- God, my fucking eye hurts. Oh, my God. The personality of Injured Cold or the Smiling Man differs between sightings. Injured Cold's experience with the salesman and John Keel paint him as non-malevolent alien who means no harm to anyone. It even presumably helps them be safe by warning them of future disasters. However, his experience with the two boys and the family sighting make him out to be a creepy and possibly paranormal stalker, but nothing much more. Not seeming to do any other sort of harm to people. You know what? He sounds kind of misunderstood to me. Yeah, I mean that's fair. He sounds be. like he's he's just trying to be helpful, but you know, be uh, him being an alien, he doesn't know the the customs. Yeah, so he just Earth. Earth. Mm-hmm. so he just speaks telepathically, maybe stalks some children. He doesn't Come know. On. He doesn't know right from wrong. He doesn't know no better. <laughs> he doesn't know no better. Give him. A t- give he doesn't know what pass. he's doing. He's a nice guy. He just sees these little humans in their homes, and he's like, "Hey, they look friendly. I'm gonna go inside and I'm hang just, out with them. I'm just looking through their window at night." <laughs> yeah, no, fuck that. <laughs> Maybe this guy sucks. All right, but this is more about um, Americanized fiction. The creepypasta version introduced in the Reddit post introduces him as a very creepy and clearly insane person who behaves very erratically, dancing oh. around randomly and staring at the sky. This version is a full-on stalker pursuing this just the author like for any, no apparent reason. Any West Virginian, yeah, <laughs> casual West Virginian, most <laughs> average, normal West Virginian. West Virginian. Yeah. No, um. It also sounds like the most average creepypasta. There's like a urban story, and it's like, what if he was going to get you, and he was dancing, even though he shouldn't be? And he had a big, wide grin yeah. on his face. Uh, due to the personality contrast between this man and Injured Cold, and the very fact that he doesn't seem to be alien or ghostly in origin, it's very likely that this man is a separate entity from Injured Cold. Well, it's not a creepypasta. How many is not real. Are running around. So I don't know what it's taught. It's like behaving as if the creepypasta was like r- reporting on facts. <laughs> It's like, this entity is likely separate from Indrid. It's like, how, you know, how do shit. you come to that conclusion? If I'm talking about, like, you know, how my dad likes helping people, and then you go, like, oh, like Goku, I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he like, likes helping people. One exists, and then you have Goku. <laughs> They're not the same. <laughs> you yeah, but they both like helping people. That's the same. It must matter. be the same. Yeah, fuck no. That's dumb. Um. Oh, shit. Check this out. The first sighting of the man is, to believe, is believed to be on the 16th of October, 1966, when two young boys were at the Elizabeth, excuse me, were at the Elizabeths, New Jersey, Elizabeth. spending time together until they noticed a very tall human-like being behind the fence. Both of the boys were brave and went towards the man, <laughs> trying to step closer Just to him. Brave boys. However, both of them started to feel fear and realized the man had a creepy smile on his face. <laughs> The man starts to look at the boys, peering at them through the fence. The boys started running away from the man until they got away. After the encounter, the boys started remembering more of the man's appearance, describing his face as having a small beady eyes and no other features other than his titular grin. <laughs> ah! He started doing the orange justice. He started doing the... It was so scary. From Fortnite. Yes. I fucking love Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite reference. 
<laughs> Please, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. All right. Yeah. Fortnite's awesome. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, oh, yeah. This is talking about our boy. Apparently, his thing was two weeks later. Uh, Darren Berger mm. was two weeks after that. Driving the home. And he oh, goes, weird. So light. he wasn't even the first uh, occurrence. No, apparently. The, also on the here. The two boys were. It's we- He noticed weird lightning in front of him is what it's saying. Weird lightning, weird lights. And we see described the, as um, like aircraft the lights. The lamp-looking spacecraft vehicle. Door opened. The man got out, going towards oh. the salesman. The man spoke to the salesman telepathically, introducing his name as Indrid Cold. To had a conversation where the man said he was an alien from a distant planet who meant no harm to the salesman. Indrid Cold said he will visit the salesman again, and he entered the spacecraft and disappeared. Wow. That's a little different from the first story. Yeah, and then a bunch Sounds of other like people. Sounds like Darren just kind of an asshole. He was he was making him out to be worse than he was. No, Darren Berger just said he was an alien or whatever. Oh, so that was from his perspective too? Yeah, Darren Berger said he was an alien. Oh, okay. Yeah, Darren Berger didn't See, think I he thought, was an asshole. I thought Darren Berger was just like, he was creepy and tall. No, he was creepy and tall. Darren Berger's right, but um, uh, he, he wasn't being evil to him. Okay, he was just telling it how it was there are a lot of these actually um a family sighting a family also reported that they had paranormal experiences which indicates towards injured cold the daughter of the family woke up one night seeing a big tall man grinning at her creepily the man walked around her bed and stood in front of her as the daughter screamed in fear and went under her covers to hide from the man he just disappeared he can't be doing that yeah that's a little fucked up Um, no matter no matter how big of a social barrier there is between humans and aliens he can't be doing that yeah no fuck that that should be... That's probably bad on his home planet, too. And I'm looking at this... Like, there are all these little investigation things being cited, but it just keeps citing the Reddit post, which isn't related. <laughs> it's a good source of information. Like, it's like it's fine, I guess, but whatever. Um, investigation. Late American investigator John Keel, who we know about, investigated the Mothman. During his investigations, he received phone calls from Indrid Cold. <gasps> The final conversation they had consisted of injured cold telling John Keel to run away because a terrible disaster would happen. As oh John God. Keel escaped, the silver bridge collapsed, <gasps> with 46 people killed from the event. Dude. Which also Mothman was there for. Oh, Doesn't they were, mention it here, but Mothman was at that silver bridge they were that both, day. Oh, so injured cold wasn't there. He just told him about it. He warned John Keel, the investigator, and then it That's happened. interesting, because Mothman, from what I know, is also like a... Uh, a harbinger. He's a of, disaster of, walker. Yeah, he causes disaster. Or he warns of disaster. He's there like when that. something evil happens. Yeah. Wow. So maybe maybe they are working together. Look at these haunting maybe, images. Maybe dude. maybe they're ops. Describe those haunting images. Oh, okay. To the audience, because you know. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, audience, for those of, for those of you listening out there in the audience, mm-hmm. um, injured cold. From what I can tell, looks like. Uh, you know, honestly, just kind of a normal guy. He's wearing a suit. Kind of how we've described him. <laughs> He's given us good descriptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, kind of an odd suit, I will say. You don't see many suits like this around. Um, but, you know, fairly fairly normal-looking guy. He's got his hairs pretty slicked back over his head. But he does have a big, big, wide, kind of scary, kind of malevolent Creepy. grin on his face. And he doesn't really look, uh, he doesn't look friendly. No, I would say he looks. Um, he looks like he is malintent. Yeah, he looks pretty creepy. But then uh, this bottom picture, it's a pretty big difference. I would say he's much darker, much scarier. Still a dude in a suit, but um, I don't think he has any hair. In this Mm-mm. one doesn't really look like he has any eyes. He may have a hat equipped in that image. I don't know if you can like make out that level of detail, but I don't. I don't see anything like a hat. He just looks bald. Okay. No eyes. But he's still got that big old Joker grin. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. You know. Amen, brother. Amen. (laughs) That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, so what do you think of this guy so far? Pretty intimidating. This guy sounds, you know, I started out thinking he was just kind of misunderstood alien. Um, Now he's a little scarier to you. He's a little more sinister, I think. You know, creeping okay. around in girls' bedrooms. That's not cool. I think you're going to get from, even from more these, fuel. From these visual descriptions also. Trust me, dude. You're going to be even more scared here in a minute. Injured Cold, wait. commonly known as the Smiling Man, is an allegedly humanoid entity. The nickname comes from the being's tendency to smile at almost everyone that encountered him. 
is said that he still visits West Virginia to this day. Fucking creep. Why are you smiling at everyone? <laughs> this is West Stop Virginia. that. We don't do that You're here. making me uncomfortable. We don't take kindly to your folk. <laughs> I would, humans, from what I... They smile at each other to uh, convey happiness. And get comfortable. Well, we don't do, do that here, <laughs> you fucking creep. This is West Virginia. <laughs> you went to the one get that shit off your face. <laughs> 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 Stop, you're killing me! Ow! Mind powers! <laughs> he does In the thing. seven days, you will die. <laughs> he does the thing from uh, X Men. <laughs> <laughs> he does the thing from X Men where uh, Magneto's about to do something that Charles Xavier doesn't want him to do. So Magneto go, or Charles Xavier goes, Remember the Holocaust! <laughs> he shoots like Holocaust imagery. <laughs> into his brain. And Magneto's like, Fuck, that was so funny. Why would up? you make me remember that? He's like, stop it, Magneto. You asshole. I <laughs> know, yeah, it was fucked up. You really didn't want to lose. It's like when you're arguing with your homie and you bring up like, oh, yeah? Well, your son died. <laughs> you hit him with the fucking <laughs> shit like that. Oh, yeah, you just broke up with your girlfriend of five years, so. So, and you're trying, to, ta- you're trying to tell me that it's my fault we lost the Apex match? Okay. <laughs> Dumbass. Hey, have fun at your mom's funeral, fault by was the way. that? Yeah. Have, have fun at grandma's funeral, by the way, man. Why would you say that? Because you're being a bitch, all right? I was the reason we even got to Ace. Because you place. said I threw the game. I did not throw the fucking game, dude. That was you. Dude, I was carrying was you the whole time. You. I was carrying you. If it wasn't for me, we would have finished in ninth instead of eighth. So maybe you shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, man. That's what they do in West Virginia. That's how, that's how they do it down there. All right. Uh, the Grinning Man is reported to be human like in appearance, though he is commonly associated with UFO activity and is sometimes believed to be an alien. Who it is also believed to be possible that he is connected with the men in black. In his first Whoa. sighting, he was described as being over six feet tall and wearing a reflective green suit with a black belt. Dude, we're getting into all kinds of crossovers uh. here. Uh. Men in black? Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah, I know. There's a lot of bleed wow. into other cryptids here. That's crazy. The crossover um, is crazy. He had a dark complexion and it small It really is like Fortnite. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> Woo! Let's go! Gaming! Gaming! Game. He had a dark complexion, as was said, which is kind of shocking to me. I feel like this type of character is generally super pale. I, yeah, that's what so I it's interesting said. that he has a nice tan. Um, complexion, small beady eyes set he far apart. closer to the sun. Ooh. He was described... Okay, he's been described as not having any nose, ears, or hair. Oh. In his second known encounter, his suit was said to be blue instead of green, but still retained its reflective property. Other than that, he was described as looking perfectly natural, slick back hair, a coat with two top buttons unbuttoned, I mean, pants lighter than the coat, but still the same material. He was also described as being quite tan, though not dark, and looking like any normal human being. It's very descriptive. He's got some drip. Oh, shit. What I'm hearing. According to reports made by Woodrow Derenberger, injured cold came from a planet named Lanulos in the Genomedes galaxy, and there were two other grinning men by the names of Demo Hassan and Carl Ardo. (laughs) Dude, what? Yeah, I don't know. What the fuck? Where did this come from? We're getting a lot of lore all of a sudden. Burger's just making stuff up at this point. like, yeah, there were like two other ones. He's like, he said yeah. he's from the fucking Speebo planet. <laughs> he brought me to meet his homies. They're from the, the Gabba Bebo galaxy. Hmm. Oh, we have more about the first sighting here with the kids. Okay. Injured Cole was first seen on October 16th, 1966, when two boys, Martin Mouse Munov and James Jimmy Yankidis, or Yanchides, I don't know, in New Jersey were walking on 4th Street when they saw a surreal figure standing near a fence. As they walked closer, the figure was a tall, bald man wearing a metal green suit who was staring right at them with a huge grin. The idiosyncratic nature, the idiosyncratic man chased them until they got away from him. UFO sightings were also reported around the area. Wow. Yeah. So in one story, he just kind of stood there, stared him down. He was scary. He was scary. They were very scared. But in this one, he chased them. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think that did mention it in one. And it does say his hobbies are include chasing people, so that makes sense. He just loves doing that. You can't hold it against him. This is a a quote from one of the boys. God forbid a man have fun, you know? Yeah, come on. Couple boys, you just want to grab them? Just chase them. Let me grab them. Chase them around. Grab them. This is a quote from one of the boys here. Jimmy nudged me and said, Who's that guy standing behind you? I looked around, and there he was, behind that fence. Just standing there, he pivoted around and looked right at us. Then he grinned a big old grin. <laughs> and then they ran away. Um, wait, wait, come back. 
<laughs> According to Nightmind, the boys only recalled the more frightening details of their encounter later on. They would recall that the man in the green suit was unusually tall and had unnatural facial features, such as the lack of ears and a nose. Even though most sources mention the New Jersey sighting, injured cold and the grinning man could be completely different entities. Damn, okay. Mm, maybe he's a shapeshifter, too. Yeah, I you mean, know, it could be. There's all these... I mean, from from what I've heard, most of these uh, most of these sightings are pretty similar. He doesn't have ears or, ears or nose or hair or anything. Yeah. But the but first one said he did have... Which is interesting, because chronologically, that one's actually the second sighting. So maybe the boys reacted so negatively to his appearance that he did more research and came in with this new manifested form. ears and nose and hair. I will wear this. I will put these on. I blend in now. I am a real human now. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. I mean, honestly, it doesn't sound that crazy. (laughs) Looking at the sky. That makes sense. Um, Yeah, a lot of these sightings happened around the same time that Mothman was happening, but this is more on the Derenberger thing. He was driving on his way home on Interstate 77 until he heard a crash. And an unidentifiable, unidentifiable vehicle appeared to land in front of his truck. The old-fashioned kerosene lamp chimney flaring at both ends, narrowing down to a small neck and then enlarging in a great bulge in the center. Pretty man came out with a dark tan, said his name was cold and he meant no harm. Uh, he just wanted to know more about the human race and he would visit Derenberger later after the encounter. Derenberger said of the cold revealed he was from the planet Lanulos in the galaxy Ganymedes. And Woodrow actually made a book by Woodrow W. <laughs> Derenberger called visitors from lonulos oh so i don't know it's something jamie can we jamie see that jamie pull that up we see this book Uh, no i'm not doing that no more i don't want to do that today (laughs) yeah no fuck you jimmy what's his name shut up jamie yeah jamie good old we don't need you get out of here get out of here (laughs) sick git (laughs) he just scattered out all right skittered um, out of the room Man, a big man, very bad. Yeah, explanations. It is commonly commonly believed that injured may be an alien entity, and this is supported by its close connection with UFO activity and with Derenberger's sightings. It's also said by Derenberger that the Grinning Man is in fact a species of aliens with multiple Grinning Men. However, this is unlikely unless the aliens are shapeshifters, because it would be almost impossible for a race to take the the exact same evolutionary path as us. It's a good point. Mm, that is true. From what I've heard, most aliens would be like crabs or something. Really. Well, I mean, everything keeps evolving into crabs. Oh, okay. Really, from what I've heard, so I don't think All it's right. that big of a stretch to. That'd be pretty cool. Fight a crab alien, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, Helldivers the... too. Oh, Are there bugs. crabs in that game? I think they're bugs. No, oh. I don't know. I don't have it. All right. Anyway, however, the third sighting by some by a family known as the Lily family suggests instead that it may be a ghost or spirit of some kind and was connected with poltergeist activity happening in the residence. Poltergeist. Yeah, it could be. Who knows? Now, now hold on just a just a dag minute here. Record scratch. Is this a ghost or an alien? All right, because they're two different things. I'm for those of you at home, the audience. Ben just showed me a picture of the troll face. <laughs> yeah, he's in the comment section. I feel outraged right now. <laughs> Sorry, I, I trolled you, bro. Just get up and leave. Um, next, I mean, that's the main stuff. So now all we have left are the comments from the cryptid wiki. Mm. And these are always a fun time. Okay. Because people are always saying some bullshit, not understanding things. They're saying irrelevant nonsense. As commenters do. Uh, here's someone who said, just some introvert to BH. <laughs> okay. His smile reminds me of the hog bear. The hog bear. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Another West Virginian classic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Check that. This one's actually funny. I feel this man's pain. I once smiled at a woman and she screamed at me. <laughs> Which, you know, that's actually pretty good. It's pretty funny. You know, I think me and this guy are more similar than... Uh... <laughs> you know, now that I think about it a little bit, maybe we have more in common. Maybe this guy's not so different after <laughs> all. We just need to be more accepting to each other. <laughs> you know, I also like to walk into people's houses late at night, and I also like chasing people around, so... <laughs> I love walking. What can I say? I love to walk behind pillars. <laughs> I love to chase women. They don't like me when I do that, though. They usually scream at me. But that's just how I have fun. <laughs> so, you know, I, f- I feel this guy. I know what he's going through. Um, another person commented on... I'm skipping the other comment I saw. Look. Someone called Sandy Fishnet said... I'm going to try and have sex with him. That's fair, I guess. Hope it goes well, man. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Slash sir. Man uh, slash sir. Man slash woman. <laughs> good um, luck, man slash sir. 
Whichever you are. <laughs> Unless Injured Cold is disguised or something, he's probably not real or not an alien, as he's too humanoid. Somebody fucking commented. Now what the hell does that have to do with it? We have an idiot in here saying, maybe he was exposed to radiation. <coughs> what? What does that even have to do with it? <laughs> makes no sense. All right. Um, oh, because he doesn't have a nose or ears or hair? Hair. What the fuck is this? Hold on. You're supposed to read all your hair falls out. Oh my god. Maybe he's a cancer patient. <laughs> we also just hey, can you help smile. me? I'm trying, ah! to, I'm trying to get to my chemo. What the fuck? A monster! <laughs> yeah, no, that's what happened. Get the hell away from me, <laughs> you freak. <laughs> These comments are crazy, though. I'm looking at this. Um, the person who said maybe he was exposed to radiation... Somebody called Scary Looking Hobo says, Certainly possible that the radiation would have had to be given to him very early, so his development would allow, allow for such deformities. Given uh, to him. And then the cryptid dude responds to him, the person responding to him and says, You replied fast. And then Scary Looking Hobo replies again and says, Yeah, I happened to be on, at, online at the same time you replied, lol. That's so kind of They just had a bizarre that's interaction. That's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> that's a, I feel like these commenters are more alien than... No, they're not human. Be. Whoever's commenting on this <laughs> these is These are real people. Uh, for some reason, this reminded me of a dream I had twice in my life, except I think the person was, like, a ginger or something. Oh, shut up. Yeah, right. And then somebody says, I'm the real injured cold. <gasps> it's him. <laughs> no, it turns out it's not. He has the internet. He has Reddit. No, Pikachu boy immediately responds and said, no, you're not. Prove it. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Does he <laughs> have any proof? No, he didn't. He didn't uh, respond. Uh, Pikachu boy put him in his fucking place. Poser. No, uh, Pikachu oh boy God. also responded to that comment two years later. Damn. So. Then somebody said, chill out, dude. It's just grandpa. Okay. Amen, brother. Yeah, it's just grandpa. Wow. Um, he must have remembered to take his joy. No good being a rotten downer. I mean, he seemed pretty happy for for most of these stories. There wasn't really a time when he seemed upset or sad or angry. Another person said, husbando. <laughs> Yes. Another person said, <clears throat> this is literally just a normal dude. That's what I'm saying. Man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This is just an average West you. Virginian man, I think. Are you nuclear pixel mental? Pixel elemental? No. Oh my god, it's you! It's, no, shut up. No. Okay. It's not me. <laughs> Cut that out. Why is he so horrifying? I cannot deal with this. I cannot deal with this. Just get over it, all right? What the fuck is this? Deal with it. Move away from West Virginia. Okay. Somebody commented and said to the person who said, "Why is he so horrifying?" Their profile picture is like an anime character in front of a flag, and somebody said, "Your flag is outdated and transphobic." Oh! And then somebody got him. Unrelated responded with a question mark. It was just like, "What?" <laughs> and somebody beneath that said, that was me. Somebody beneath that said, "What that the fuck do me. you mean? What it's just a lesbian flag." What are you talking about? You're an How idiot. Does a flag get outdated? Yeah, no, that is a little crazy. <laughs> We're talking about uh, the Grinning Man here. Ooh. We're not talking about that. This fancy chap, his manner of smiling, this man must be a posh pillow salesman. Yes, sir, I've seen this once before. His name was Albert. Oh. That's got to be one of his friends. Because we got a British guy. One of his lan lanulon. Yeah, all these people are fucking British. Planet lanulon friends. This person said, a bit scary, isn't it? A bit scary, in it? Yeah, and then we have another guy. Quite creepy. <laughs> he looks like a friendly enough chap. <laughs> we get blokes like them down in England all the time. Down in Westshire. <laughs> Better fucking Smith. Down in Worcestershire. <laughs> yeah, down no. in Brexit, we get we get blokes <laughs> like him. He's a bit regular, isn't he? <laughs> what do you think, Marvin? My, my, my bloke, my friend is like that. I don't know, he looks a little bit strange but to no, me. I don't know, his, his grin is a little bit... Scary to me. I would call it a bit creepy, even. Marvin, you're being silly. A bit flabbergasting. Marvin, you're being gay again. Stop. You're embarrassing me in front of my wife. <laughs> Sorry, That's sir. how they do it down there. I fucking hate that. Across the so pond. <laughs> um, what else we got? God. Wait, the second t sighting was seen around the same time and place as Mothman, and they're both aliens? I'm scared. Is Mothman an alien? Or is he... I don't know. I don't know why that person said that. We're not getting into that. It's not confirmed or that's denied. A, that's a different episode. It's a different episode, yeah. Uh, people believe he is related to the Mothman, but he isn't anyway. Also, he's an alien, so obviously he'd be spotted by nearby aliens. And then <laughs> this Pikachu boy comes back and says, Oh, shit, wait. Maybe he can transform into Mothman, making them one and the same. 
All right, Pikachu boy, I was on your side for a while. You really owned that guy, but that was the stupidest fucking thing. These comments are baffling because a lot of the time, there's, like, no evidence of what they're saying. They're just like, maybe this could be the case. They just make shit up. It's... It goes back to a quote I like. I forget who said it, but sky's the limit when you're just making shit up. It's so true. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess if you're just going to say something, sure. Just go maybe ahead. Maybe that I mean, could be the case. I mean, there's no one there to tell you that you're wrong. There's maybe when I die, saying, I'm going to turn into a fucking grape. <laughs> you're right. You don't, you, we never know. Who knows? It you could don't know what happens. happens. It's like, yeah, I guess so. If I die, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna burrow down into the ground and become a, a tree. Okay. That's probably gonna happen. Yeah, it might happen. Okay, cryptid. There's, wiki there's commenter. no one out there who's gonna be like, um, no. Well, that's not Holy true. There are tons of people that would do that. This person said, "What boring cryptid page ever." Dude, and somebody come else on. said, "Get the book about him then." <laughs> get the off. book about him then. If you hate it so much, if you, get a, if you hate him so much, why don't you read more about him? Then here's another one. His smile look. His smile looks familiar. When the imposter is sus. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, fuck that guy. Um. Shut up. He's like nine years old. What else do we got here? This happened to my uncle Robert. <laughs> That's someone. What? Robert. Uh. I forgot the guy's name already. Mr. Mr. Silly name. Woodrow. Uh. Wood Woodrow Darenberger. Woodrow Wilson. Darenberger. Yeah. Robert Darenberger. <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck? Whoa. Dude, there's... I printed so many fucking comments. Oh, my God. All right. This Are they one... all funny? Uh, kind of. They're all something, at least. I'm skipping some of these. That's something. This is from Sam Wham, and he wrote, like, an essay. Oh, boy. Indrid Cold or Kindred Cod because an extension of my family lived around Lake Superior at the Kindred time, and they had a friend of the family by that name who liked to travel a lot very pleasant and friendly man who always smiled even when it wasn't really appropriate and he liked to sneak up behind people known as known at the time as uncle kane or grandpa kane he has a cheeky attitude and liked to steal candy from shops and play players this is fucking nothing are you talking about? i'm not reading this person's <laughs> schizo <talking> essay <laughs> wait 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 so he's trying to act like he knows him yeah i think so he's like yeah it's my uncle's friend <laughs> yeah what the fuck what an idiot yeah, right. i know this guy is pretty chill if you guys want to hear more about this look up injured cold on the cryptid wiki and go to the comments by sam <laughs> wham i am not reading his fucking fan fiction i'm kind of curious now i'll let you read it after this <laughs> because i do not want to sit and read this whole yeah, bullshit no, 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 no. um oh what the fuck First off, I would like to say I know quite a bit about Injured Cold. I've researched the UFO wave that was going on in the 1960s. Just to let everyone know, the picture above says that... Oh, the picture above that says is supposed to be a picture of Injured Cold is actually most likely the spaceman known as Demo Hassan, which is from the same planet as Injured. They are known on the planet as researchers, that there is a profession. Uh, you can read this in the book Beyond Lanulos and Visitors from Ron- Lanulos. Mmm. Wow. You have some some educated folks out here. What the fuck is that's probably the didn't devil. it say that uh, Mister Mister Woodrow uh, wrote a book? Yeah, he's he. That's the book. Is that, that the guy? Is that the same book he's talking? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, somebody wow. said that's probably the devil. Look at the date he first appeared. <laughs> he appeared in sixty <gasps> six. Ah! Yeah, no, that's. Crazy, man. Good point. That's probably just the devil. <laughs> All the comics are like, to be honest, I think it was just a coincidence. No, it's not the devil. It's space people from another dimension. Nothing to be scared of. <laughs> Dumbass. And then somebody said, no, it's me. Smile, smile, ah, smile. It's him. Um, then we had, I had to get, a, I had to look at this article to get a good look at the cryptid. And I'm using his description as kind of a reference for an expression, for an expression meme that I'm doing with various cryptids. Okay. <laughs> okay. No one cares, dude. William Afton, I think, is based off this cryptid because the way he is. <laughs> Scott Cawthon, is that you? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, wow. Just because he, he didn't say anywhere he was purple, right? Mm-mm. He's definitely not purple He's guy. Not purple. <laughs> He's green and blue, if even. Uh, I think that guy's reaching a little bit. Uh, I thought this was an urban legend and not a cryptid. And someone responded, it's not an urban legend. These people creatures are coming through some kind of portal from other dimensions. They are real. They are real. And then somebody responds, said, brush up on, on your English. No one will take you seriously with all your misspellings. And somebody responded, trill. It's 
Someone else responded true. Yeah. Kind of sounds like a thin man from XCOM. <laughs> All right. Thanks. He Thanks, appears man. from Creepy Pasta. Some real, some real characters in these comments. All right, that's it. That's all I'm reading of this. These fucking sucked. Okay. Uh, I hate the comments as usual. Yeah, they're pretty lame. I'm kind of over these people. There, just were, a few, nothing. there were a few decent ones, I guess. Yeah. But... Wow. I don't know, Lane. Uh, what do you think? What would you do if you encountered injured cold on a cold night? You I pull over and he's there. If I encountered injured cold, first off, the first rule of West Virginia. You're not in West Virginia. It's in Oklahoma Road oh, somehow. It's in Oklahoma. Okay. So he's been doing some traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm by myself. I'm in my car. I'm yes. driving alone on the road. Uh, and I see this man on the side of the road, right? No. What happens is your car... Oh, my car stops. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. My car Damn stopped. It. My car stopped. I gotta get out and look at this. Hope yeah. no hope no coyotes are nearby. I go. Ch- I gotta go check under the hood real quick. Just make sure what's going on. Put up the thing. Hmm. And it's crazy. <laughs> in, you, in your head, you hear a thought that isn't your own. You turn around. He- hello there, little boy. You turn around. Injured cold stands <gasps> there in his suit. He's telepathically talking to you. He's grinning most evilly. I'd be like, oh my god! Would you yell that, do you think? I think so, probably. Yeah. What the f- There's a strange man <gasps> yeah. standing behind me with a big talking creepy Talking into grin. your brain. Talking into my brain. I'd be like, oh my- What the fuck? <laughs> would would I say him? that out loud or would I say it- It's up to you. Head? I think I would say it out loud. Yeah, because you're just so scared. Yeah, just because I'm so scared. I'd be like, oh my- <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what else do you do? You get over your initial shock. Do you think you stand there and you're like, oh, hey, man, are you like, ah, and immediately back in your car? I feel like I would just run back to my car, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I would do. (laughs) Open my car door. Oh, Oh my God. What the fuck was that? He's still there, though. He's just standing in the same place, just out there. No, he followed you. He was trying to chase you. (laughs) Now he's at your your driver's side window. He does like chasing people. I forgot about that. He's bent over, and he's like, Smiling at you. You're like, who the fuck are you, man? <laughs> Get, the Get fuck away! <laughs> what are you doing? Get the fuck off! He's like, I mean you no harm, human. <laughs> Get out of my brain! Get the fuck away from me! <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty authentic answer. You take out your pistol and shoot him between the eyes. I don't. I don't have a pistol, but you gotta get one. I have in a case little. I have a little knife cold. in my. Uh, in my. Um, my car. You'd cut his face off. Yeah, I'd roll down my window. Just. Okay. Yeah. Like, ah. Okay. Cool. Ow. I think that's a good Ow. answer. Ouch! Ouch! Stop it! Ow, Lane. Stop it! How do you know who I am? <laughs> How do you know who I am? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. I In think an that's alternate reasonable. universe where maybe I'm more chill that day. Yeah. I'm just I'm open to more experiences. Maybe. Yeah. So let's rewind to the part where I'm open. <laughs> yeah. Ah, shit. <laughs> What's going oh, on with the car? It. My car stops. This sucks, but I'm kind g- of in a good mood right now, so I'm. I think I'll be. I gotta okay. get out, but I'm really open to new experiences <laughs> right now. That's what hey, I'm this thinking. is a new experience. At yeah. least I can learn how to fix my car. That's what I'm. Op- that's what I'm thinking in my head right now. And then all of a sudden, hello, hello, human, hello, little boy. <laughs> I turn. I'm like, what the hell? And then I see yeah. this, this guy standing behind me. And I'm like, oh hey man, what's up? Mm-hmm. And then maybe I realize I'm like, wait, we're talking in my head. He didn't say anything. Hello, it was, Lane. It was all in my head. Maybe I get a little more freaked out there. I'm like, okay, well, what is How do you know my on? name, man? How do you know my name? How are you speaking to me directly in my head? I'm an extraterrestrial, but I'm kind. I mean you no harm. In this situation, I'd be like, oh, you know, okay. Okay, I believe you. Okay, I, b- <laughs> I believe you. That's a good argument. That's pretty cool. I'm like, do you have like a like a flying saucer? Yes, look, it's, na- it looks like an oil lamp, Lane. Yes, look, it's over there. I'm going to go in it and disappear, but it was nice getting to talk to you. I will find you again. Does he warn me of any uh, imminent disaster coming my way? Lane, tell your mom to stay off her computer on November 9th, 2027. Oh, shit. Okay, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to remember that or Remember not. it or she will have something rotten happen. <sighs> okay, okay uh, can I, like, write it down real quick? November... If you want, I don't care. November... November... Uh, 9th? Yes, that's 2027? Right. Okay, yes, goodbye, Lane. Whoa. Dude, that was, that was crazy. What the you hell just happened? you get back in your car, or do you like, be like, Oh, fuck, I should have asked him for help in my car. <coughs> I feel like he probably wouldn't have known, known how. I don't know, Lane. I'd help if I could, but I... do I, not know these human mechanics. I don't understand this, unfortunately. I do not understand how your vehicles operate. I think you'd be tripping a little right. bit, white boy. Dude. 
What the hell? Yeah, how long? You don't know how to fix a car, <laughs> but you know how to speak like a like a Gen Alpha kid. <laughs> Why do you call me white boy? Also, you're also white, visibly white like boy. you're tan, but we're both white. Yeah, you're you're visibly tan, but your not name is dark. Indrid Cold. That is a white man's name. Did he tell me his name? Yeah. I'm Indrid Cold, I'm Indrid Cold, also known as the Smiling Man or the Dancing Man <laughs> or the Grinning Man, even or the Grinning Man. <laughs> That's cool. Are you excited to be meeting me, Lane? I mean, actually, yeah. I I just talked about you uh, with my friend Ben on his on his podcast, The Goblin Hour. Okay. <laughs> you should listen to it. No, I don't think I will. <laughs> wait, you don't have Spotify? Goodbye. What? Wait, <laughs> Indrid. Wait, come back. Uh all oh, rats. Oh man. Well, I think that's that the sucks. conclusion of Goblin Hour. Um, <laughs> that was pretty good. Lane, do you want to shout anything out? Uh, I don't think so. No. No, you don't want to shout out your Instagram or something, or your home address or anything. Uh, yeah, I'll do my home address. That's okay. <laughs> no, don't do your home address. <laughs> my address is what? <laughs> I would have to be like fucking. Just bleep it out. The whole just thing. Bleep it out. <laughs> um, uh. I mean, just look up Twitter account and Instagram. I don't, I don't have, I don't have Twitter. I have Instagram. You can shout it out if you want, or you can just shout out a show you've so been my watching. My name is spelled L A Y N E. I guess if you look up Lane L A Y N E <laughs> on Instagram, you'll probably find me. Yeah, that's that's about it. No, I'm gonna censor because it it's your <laughs> full legal name. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, probably censor that. Are there any shows or movies you like? Uh, you want to shout out shows or movies that I like, or games, or books. Mm. Uh, Elden Ring. Play Elden Ring. Play, play Elden Ring. Okay. Play Dark Souls Three. Nice. <laughs> Good answers. Thanks. Thank you for being here, Lane. It was a this treat. was a great time. I had a lot of fun. Okay. Thank Good you for hear. thank you for having me on. Hey, dude. Anytime. And and for me, this has been Goblin Hour. Ben, signing off of Goblin Hour.